Today, more than 600,000 Texans rank as functional illiterates. This means they're practically unable to read and write. Unless something different is done, for them it may be too late. One third of the young men in Texas who try to qualify for the draft fail the written test. For them it may be too late. The Governor's Committee on Public Education reported in April that the dropout rate in Texas is 26%. For these young people it may be too late. In all these areas, Texas ranks well below the national average. In our report, we tried to outline some areas which concerned us. And we came up with proposals we hope will be incorporated in our platform, which will be written next month. In short, Our design uh, is changed by additional. Mr. Harfler, can we expect? I have in mind particularly the uh, apparent increasing tendency to put out regulations in order that there may be additional regulations without giving sufficient time and thought to think them through and to develop the uh, procedures uh, carefully that are required to determine whether the standards are met. Uh, I think this has been increasingly the case in these last few standards issued. They deserve a great deal more work than they're getting before they issue. It's been commented one time that cars could be built more safely than they are in the now, but the public wouldn't buy them. Have you got any comments on this? Yes, I think that uh, was an unsupportable statement at the time, and uh, it's, it's been evident uh, in retrospect in that the public is buying them and buying them in greater numbers than ever before uh, with uh, more safety features, more safety equipment uh, than cars have ever had. Yes, admittedly, uh, individual motorists didn't make decisions in favor of safety. They tended to buy white wall tires and uh, special radios and so on. But uh, the decision has been made for them, uh, and very constructively, by the government under this regulatory program. And uh, with the decision being made, they've gone along with it, and uh, say they're buying cars in increasing numbers. Voter turnout for today's special election in Dallas was expected to be light, and a random pick of the polling places around Dallas seems to bear this out. Only about 13% of the qualified electorate in the 3rd Congressional District, or approximately 25,000 of 190,000 persons eligible to vote, are expected to turn out to cast their ballots. This special election to fill the seat in Congress left vacant by the death of U.S. Representative Joe Poole has only two candidates, unlike previous special elections. The widow of the late congressman, Mrs. Elizabeth Poole, a 51-year-old Democrat, and Jim Collins, a 52-year-old Republican. Collins has been picked by most political pros as the victor. However, today's winner will serve only the four months remaining to complete Joe Poole's term will face another candidate in the November 5th general election. Collins will definitely be the Republican candidate in that election against a yet unnamed Democratic opponent. Mrs. Poole has said her political ambitions do not extend past her late husband's present term. Indeed, her campaign has been that she wants to complete the work her late husband has started. While Collins is seeking seniority in what he believes will be a Republican Congress in 1969. Whatever the results, Channel 8 will have them for you throughout this evening in a complete election wrap-up at 10.20 tonight. This is Skip Sage reporting for Channel 8 News. Mm -hmm.
when we speak of its approach to law and order, the a part of the Civitan Creed is that my mind teaches me respect for the law. This is the part of the creed that a Civitan makes when he recites his creed, and uh, it's part of the thinking that Civitan has. We obviously are interested in any matter that would pertain to the control of the so-called crime in the streets and things of this kind. As an organization, there is no direct approach that we might make to it toward achieving some particular goal or some particular accomplishment. Uh, the purpose of Civitan Clubs will be in all areas to work with youth, uh, primarily toward teaching them to be better citizenship and to have the better citizens and to have this respect for the law. But right now, the message that I want to get across is that not only the automobile problem, but the rest of the air pollution problems, except for local nuisances, are moving along and at a rate that uh, I think exceeded uh, some of the expectations. And this is not to say that we can relax in any way. We have to keep on improving the automobile situation. We've got to keep on improving the industrial situation. We've got to keep on improving our individual attention, how we burn our garbage, things of that general nature. But uh, we are on the way to maintaining the air resource for future generations, and we're well underway on that subject.